The ocean is the largest living space on Earth, and two-thirds of it is owned by no one. These are the high seas, beyond the reach of national laws, the domain of the whales. How do you protect a place so vast, so remote, and for which no one is responsible? Well, first, you need to know what needs protecting. The high seas are vast, deep, and dark. The surface layers are home to more familiar creatures. Albatross above, fish beneath, tiny krill, and giant whales. Which is the most important to protect? Perhaps it's the plants. Phytoplankton, the microscopic floating plants of the high seas. What they lack in size, they make up for in numbers. Plankton blooms can be so dense and vast, they can be seen from space. They're so numerous, they create as much oxygen as all the world's forests and grasslands combined. They also soak up vast quantities of carbon, making them a crucial ally in our fight against climate change. But how do you protect phytoplankton? In the high seas, essential nutrients are scarce, and everything, plankton included, has a tendency to sink into the darkness below, where no plant can grow. Enter the whales. They mix up the water, flicking the sinking plankton back into the sunlight. Astonishingly, this mixing by marine animals from whales to jellyfish is locally equivalent to the mixing caused by winds and waves and tides. Whales also make another contribution to the high sea's circle of life. They defecate at the surface fertilizing the sunlit shallows and fueling the growth of plankton. The plankton feeds fish and krill, and the fish and krill feed whales. The whales then recycle the nutrients back to where they're most needed. So, for the plankton to thrive, it's the predators that need protecting. Last century, we nearly lost the whales. Just in time, we called off the hunt. But we're still hunting the high seas' other predators, tuna and sharks. And many we don't target still get caught on our hooks and in our nets. And now there's a new threat. Our waste. Washed off the land and over the horizon, it never really disappears. By 2050, there could be a greater weight of plastics in the ocean than fish. As it fragments, it is ingested by plankton, works up the food chain, and then accumulates in the bodies of the top predators. These days, when a whale carcass is washed onto a beach, it may be treated as toxic waste due to the poisons concentrated in its flesh. So how can we protect the high seas? We simply need to better control what we take out and what we put back in. It could be surprisingly easy. Collectively, the fish that are caught in the high seas amount to only a tenth of what we catch in coastal waters. It's so expensive to fish out here that only a few nations do so, chasing high-value species like tuna. If all the subsidies to these fleets were ended, only a few would be able to turn a profit. That would save thousands of endangered tuna, sharks, turtles, seabirds and dolphins. And that's not all. 
Currently, only 1% of the high seas are protected. We could set aside a third or more as sanctuaries where all marine life can thrive. We can all play our part in saving the high seas by seeking out products that never need to be binned. Imagine living in a world in which there was nothing to throw away, in which everything is designed to last, to be repaired or upgraded, reused or recycled, but never discarded. For our high seas, there is hope. Right now, the United Nations are negotiating a brand new treaty to protect all life in the high seas. Such international agreements have worked before. 30 years after the nations of the world called a halt to commercial whaling, humpback whales appeared off South Africa in numbers that hadn't been seen for over a century. What worked for the whales can work for other life too. We once thought the oceans were too vast to be polluted, too bountiful to be depleted. We still act as if the high seas belong to no one. It's time to embrace that they belong to us all. This is our opportunity to restore what we have lost, to protect all the wonders of the high seas, and to choose products fit for a finite planet, for our planet.